Imagine we had a generic cryptocurrency. Let's call it GT coin. Like other cryptocurrencies, it's really difficult to buy goods with GT coin. You can't just walk into a bookstore, for example, and buy any of these cool books with it. Instead, you have to take your GT coin and convert it to dollars to do that. It turns out that trying to convert most cryptocurrencies back to dollars is a challenge. But the crypto market has figured out a solution to this. A stable coin. Stable coins work like this. Imagine I'm the owner of a $1 bill. If I find the creator of a stable coin, they would offer me the following. If I give them a dollar, they will manufacture one stable coin and give it to me. So I give them that buck and I get back one stable coin that has been manufactured just because I gave $1 to the stable coin creator. As the name suggests, stable coins do not operate like normal cryptocurrency. Instead, they are stable insofar as they are pegged to something else. For this particular coin, it's a dollar. But it could be something else, like a euro or whatever other currency you might want. The idea being that if you have one stable coin, you can go back to the creator of the stable coin, give back that stable coin, and receive $1 in return. And the price is always fixed at $1. It doesn't have the volatility of other cryptocurrencies. This allows the market to have much more liquidity than it would otherwise, because there are things out there that are effectively dollar bills. For example, once you've acquired a bunch of stable coins by paying $1 each for them, you can then go seek out someone with a GT coin and make a trade based off of that, exchanging stable coins, which are effectively dollars, for the GT coin. After that trade has been completed, if the person now possessing stable coin actually just wanted money, they can go back to the creator of the stable coin, trade in one stable coin, and get one dollar back. If you think a little more about this, the entity behind the stablecoin is effectively a bank. For them to put a stablecoin out into the world, they first must receive $1. Then that stablecoin attached to that dollar goes out into the marketplace. And that's true for every stablecoin out there. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence from a stable coin to a $1 bill. But there are a couple of problems here. One nefarious and one not so nefarious. Let's start with the not so nefarious one. If you're the creator of the stable coin, you don't want to just sit in all these $1 bills that are corresponding to the stable coins out in the marketplace. Like any other bank, you want to make some money off of this. So instead of keeping all of those $1 bills on hand, you only keep a portion of them on hand. You'll send the rest of the money out into the world as an investment, something that is rather safe, so you'll be able to get it back, but also that will deliver at least some amount of profit in the process. But acting like a bank in this manner leaves the stablecoin vulnerable to a traditional sort of bank run. Imagine one day that the United States, China, and European Union all announce new rules and regulations as it relates to cryptocurrency. Although the intention of those new regulations might not be to destroy the crypto market, it may nevertheless scare those individuals that are currently holding on to stablecoin. And rather than stay in the crypto marketplace, they might seek to get their real dollars back at the one-to-one -one exchange as the stablecoin is supposed to be set up for. If only a handful of people do this, everything is fine. 
After all, the entity behind Stablecoin does have some cash on hand. If tons of people all come at the same time, though, the entity behind Stablecoin is in trouble. They simply don't have enough dollars on hand to pay everyone back as they're supposed to. What's pernicious about this type of bank run is that it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy even if there is no underlying problem with the market. Think about two individuals, both with lots of stablecoin on hand. The person on the left might be worried that the market is unstable, and thus they plan to cash out. The person on the right may know for a fact that there are no underlying fundamental problems with the market. But the fact that someone else is worried is cause for a concern. They may not be worried about the market, but they should be worried that the other person is worried. And they don't want to be in a situation where there are no more dollars on hand to pay out the stable coins. As a result, the person on the right might want to cash out just because they suspect the person on the left wants to cash out. This is where the self-fulfilling prophecy kicks in. The person on the left now has an expectation that the person on the right is going to cash out. And that expectation makes them even more inclined to cash out than they were before. The person on the right realizes the game is on. Because the person on the left has accelerated their desire to cash out, the person on the right now faces even more pressure to cash out before all of the stable coin dollars are completely gone. Of course, this only reinforces the person on the left's belief that the market was unstable. And so they now want to cash out immediately, right this moment, so that they are not caught being the last person to try to do that but that just makes the person on the right want to race to the creator of the stablecoin to get their money ASAP. It is therefore in equilibrium for everyone to race to cash out, even if all parties are in agreement that staying in is better and that everyone is willing to stay in, conditional on the expectation that everyone else will also stay in. In game theory, this sort of incentive is known as a stag hunt. And it means that bad things can happen almost because bad things are expected to happen. Historically speaking, this type of run has been a problem for all types of banks. But more recently, traditional banks have not been as concerned about this. And the reason, as the background image has subtly suggested all along, is something known as deposit insurance. In the United States, the entity behind this is the FDIC. And their role is to guarantee the money that is in any bank account will be paid out by the government even if the bank does not have the money on hand. This solves the self-fulfilling prophecy. I no longer have to be worried that you're going to beat me to the punch at the bank. Because even if you do, and even if you take out all of the money, leaving there to be none left for me, the government will still make me whole. As such, we're both perfectly willing to wait around and let the financial system work as it should. Without that, though, the standard crypto market is vulnerable to that type of bank run. Stablecoins create a second problem, and one that's far more nefarious than the first. A stablecoin creator acting in good faith will only mint a new stablecoin when they have received a dollar. A stablecoin creator acting in bad faith is not bound by that. They might create stablecoin out of thin air, and then use that newly manufactured stablecoin to trade for another cryptocurrency in this case, GT coin. Moreover, there's nothing stopping them from repeating that process. Every single time manufacturing new stablecoin without any dollars in reserve, and then going out into the market and trading to get some other cryptocurrency. 
Think about what this looks like from the perspective of an outsider. They're looking in on this and seeing lots of stablecoin being created, which are supposed to be backed by real dollars. Moreover, they're seeing lots of purchasing of GT coin. As such, a reasonable conclusion to draw based off of the evidence in front of them is that there is a ton of demand for GT coin. That individuals in this marketplace are taking dollars, converting them to stablecoin, so that they have enough crypto in the marketplace to be able to then purchase the GT coin. Thus, they might now start speculating that GT coin is going to be on a huge bull run, and as a consequence, purchase a whole bunch of GT coin themselves. Putting all of this together, the price of GT coin goes crazy, both because the stablecoin manufacturer has purchased a lot of it, and now because speculators are coming into the market and purchasing even more. But now we have a house of cards. The creator of the stablecoin can take the GT coin that they now own, go to a different exchange that does not involve stablecoin, and convert those GT coin into actual money. Now think about the person that's holding all of the stablecoin. They have a whole bunch of it, and eventually they would like to get that back into real cash. At first, the creator of the stablecoin may allow some of those transactions to go through so they can continue this process for longer. But eventually, the person that's holding a ton of stablecoin is really going to fully want to cash out, at which point the creator of the stablecoin can just disappear. The house of cards falls apart, and now all of the stablecoin are revealed to be worthless. Clearly, that's a bad outcome. But you may get some relief thinking to yourself that at least the GT coin, if it is in fact a legitimate cryptocurrency, isn't going to have any sort of secondary problems as a consequence of the stablecoin going bust. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The GT coin had a higher price created by the artificial manufacturing of the stablecoin. The reason GT coin was going to the moon was because the entity behind the stablecoin was able to pump a bunch of fake money into the system. This inflated the GT coin's price. And now that the stablecoin has been revealed to be worthless, the value of the GT coin is going to plummet as a result. To make matters worse, this connects back to the original bank run problem. Think about two individuals both holding the stablecoin. One may ask the other if they've heard about the rumors that the stablecoin is illegitimate. The natural reaction, of course, is that the other person would want to cash out. But it might be that the original person knows that the rumors are false. And in fact, the stablecoin in question is 100% and completely legitimate. But like we saw before, that does not matter if everyone believes the rumor. Now for the side that's in the dark, this just makes things worse. If people who think the stablecoin is legitimate are cashing out, then someone who has uncertainty has no reason to stay in. But that just makes the person who knows that the stablecoin is actually legitimate have less confidence in the people that are holding the stablecoin not to go on that bank run. And so it's time for them to get out. And once more, we're off to the races. The lesson here is that beliefs about the fundamentals of the market matter almost as much as the actual fundamentals themselves. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.